Welcome to Construction Review's weekly roundup of the news in the building and construction industry in Africa. We begin our news in Nigeria where the federal government has announced that repair works are set to resume on the third mainland bridge. Results of investigative tests on the bridge are ready and that contractors will move to site at the completion of the traffic management strategy. The third mainland bridge is the longest of three bridges connecting Lagos Island to the mainland. The other are the Echo and Carter bridges. It was the longest bridge in Africa until 1996 when the 6th October bridge located in Cairo was completed. The government of Mozambique has signed a 506 million US dollar deal with various foreign institutions for the Temane Maputo power line project. The Powerline project is an initiative of the Mozambican government and the publicly owned electricity company EDM. It is said to be a 563-kilometer electricity transmission line from Timane in the southern Mozambican province of Inhambane to Maputo. It is scheduled to commence in the first half of 2020 and end late 2023. On to Zimbabwe where mini hydro and solar projects with capacity to generate 300 megawatts are set to be constructed. The Infrastructure and Development Bank of Zimbabwe, IDBZ, has announced stating that it is counting for investors to finance the projects. The bank pointed out that they have identified six projects to generate the 300 megawatts. The identified projects include development and construction of a 1.7 megawatt mini hydro power plant at Osborne Dam, Ozani mini hydro project in Mutare, a 50 megawatt Rufaro solar farm project in Marondera, Gutu solar farm project also set to generate 20 megawatts among others. In South Africa, construction of Sterling Industrial Park units is set to be completed before the end of this year. Central Innovation District has completed construction of four units with only two final units remaining. The industrial park has incorporated modern technology with enhanced security, efficiency and power which are all major considerations for businesses. Other than the 24-hour central point pressing security, Sterling Industrial Park also has its own perimeter fencing and security gates serving all units. And that is all we have this week. Be sure to subscribe below to ensure you don't miss our weekly roundup and also visit our web portal constructionreviewonline.com for more information and a chance to subscribe to the digital format of our print publication.